sometimes find like what is my place out here which a lot of you might be questioning as well and it's a very important space and that's why I think we all are connected and one thing that connects all of us through life is experience our own experiences and what experience teaches us is truly the value the value of an opportunity an opportunity I just want you all to think before you were not wearing suits you know when you've just come to America or me trying to make my first break film in fact my uh, the gentleman who gave me my first break is right here Rajiv Rai he gave me charge for my hotel okay and he knows how much I was struggling at that point in time to get that first break and to get that opportunity and um, you all know what it felt like when you all waited for hours and months and years you know saying hey, I'll go, I'll give me that break you went to temples or went to mosques and you know kept mannats and you know fasts and everything and said let me get that break and when that break came and an opportunity showed itself to you you grabbed it by the neck and what did you do you created more opportunity more opportunity for yourself more opportunity for your families more opportunity for your businesses and you grew and growth is great and now you create more opportunities for others and I think that is the best space to be in when you are in a space to give and that's why we are here today you know cry is here today to help us give an opportunity to a lot of children out there there are 80 million children in India who are out of school there are 30 million children in India who are forced into child labor there are 12.3 million people children in India who are forced into child marriage or into the sex trade. And being parents, I want you to do one thing, is just close your eyes for a second and visualize one of your kids as those kids. I think we all need to give those children that one hand, that helping hand, bring them up here, you know, and give them that opportunity that they're looking for. It is my pleasure to welcome the very handsome Arjun Rampal here in Anaheim. Great to see you. You're here for Cry. What a wonderful event you just did. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. And let's <coughs> recreate a little bit of that event that you just spoke through your heart. You moved me and the entire audience. You talked about underprivileged children. I spoke from my heart, as you said. So. Yeah. Uh, Cry is a wonderful organization. I remember for a long time, you know, um, even when I used to go and buy a Valentine's card or if I bought a card for my mom on Mother's Day or, uh, you know, a birthday card, uh, somehow uh, it was always instilled in us to go and buy a Cry card because it was going to make a difference. And nobody knew 30 years ago when Cry was actually established. I remember my dad used to buy a Cry card, mom used to buy one. I was kind of in the family and, and it kind of grew and it kept growing but I didn't know what CRY was about, you know, it's children, rights and you. That's what the full form of it is, you being of course the donor and uh, the children rights, what uh, at that point in time also I did not understand what it was. And yes, when you become a parent and you, as you were correctly saying, you know, you live abroad, when you come to India you have to kind of uh, uh, you know, desensitize uh, uh, sen sensitize yourself towards what's really happening and what you're seeing and you kind of take it in your stride. I think most Indians end up doing that too. You know, you see people on the streets living in horrible conditions and um, you think that's the way it is, but it's not. It's not the way it's meant to be. It's not right. And um, when I was approached by Cry to be one of their supporters, uh, I said, wow, you know, from that point where I was buying that card to now, you know, I must have done something or whatever I have achieved so far in my life, um, it helps me to kind of give back, you know, and make it a full circle. Uh, it helps me to uh, feel a sense of gratitude, which I think we all want to have. It's the best emotion in the world to have. Uh, and for doing really not much, I, I'm just leading my life the way I lead my life. The, it's not that I'm a saint or, uh, you know, uh, uh, a very active activist or a grassroots worker. But yes, by coming here today, you know, and having 
a certain amount of power to attract people, people who are, you know, doing well in life, people who are generous and like-minded, and those who are not even that like-minded, who maybe just came out for a nice dinner, you know, with a celebrity, ended up learning about what's going on. And those videos that you saw, the way what Cry uh, put out there, you know, about the children, about uh, the schools, the healthcare, uh, you know, the sex trade that goes on with uh, little children, the child marriages. You know, I think as a parent, if you can just visualize your child being there, it kind of, you won't be able to sleep at night. So it's good if we can, in our small little ways, keep, you know, like this every drop fills the ocean. Uh, in, uh, there's a huge void out there. There are lots of kids, 80 million children who don't go to school, 30 million who uh, are forced into child uh, labor, 12.3 who are forced into child marriage or um, you know the sex trade. Um, if we can, we need to do something about it. If we don't do anything about it, we are pushing these children who are supposed to be happy, who are supposed to become individuals, who are supposed to like how our children are, you know, right? by giving them good education, good health, uh, good upbringing, you know, good exposure to good things in life, you will push these people into a dark space. That dark space is going to come back and bite you as a society because you have been irresponsible. So I think that little bit of responsibility we all need to take and I'm glad that I could take it today. Yeah, very, very beautifully said. So tell me on a spiritual level, how did it change you spiritually as a human being when your eldest daughter was born? Well, again, you feel the sense of uh, gratitude, you know, it's like a miracle. I, I remember the only thought that was going through my mind uh, when Mahika was being born and I was only praying for. Uh, again, it was for her just to be healthy. You know, that's it. Yeah. And that was the most important thing. Then, I believe spiritually, uh, I meditate. I um, I'm, I believe quite a spiritual person. Uh, I believe that we all are just souls. Uh, we all come from one place. And, uh, you know, uh, which is um, this space of great energy and light. And uh, so I don't believe in religions. I don't believe in color caste, you know, creed, none of that. Uh, I believe that we all are souls and every soul is born with innate qualities of love, peace, happiness, purity, power, knowledge, blissfulness, happiness. And that's what we all are deserve to be when you have a baby that is born. Why do you like that baby so much? Because it's the optimum of purity. And um, we then become an acquired being. Like, who are you? I'm Arjun Rampal. What do you do? I'm an actor, you know. Um, and what else do you do? So, okay, I have a restaurant. I have two daughters. I, you know, like to um, do certain things. And that becomes your acquired being, which is this, which is your physical state. Um, and we kind of take more and more for our physical state and kind of kill the soul, which is your innate qualities. And that's when you start looking for meditation and different forms to go into to finding that realization. Things like this, things like birth of your children or trying to do something selflessly for others creates an awakening within that uh, soul again, you know, is food for that soul. And uh, so I believe that the soul is the driver. This is our costume or the soul is the actor. This is our costume. and. Uh, this is just temporary, but the soul will live on. Wow, that is so beautifully said. And your soul is beautiful, and the outer costume is pretty darn good looking as well. <laughs> you charmed so many women today, and they donated generously. <laughs> that was so cute to see. They, they, but they, they, were, uh, they wanted lots in uh, return. I costume. know. <laughs> I saw that, and you were so generous with the love. <laughs> but on a lighter note, um, let's switch back to your work. You have a couple of movies coming out. I saw the trailer of Daddy. Yes. It seems like a fantastic film. Tell me all about it. So yeah, Daddy is a film which is my first biopic. It's a true story, a first true tr story that I've worked on. It's a story that I've also produced and written. 
and uh, there's my director Osham Aluwalia, who's just uh, one of I think going to be one of the mo finest finds and directors that India has uh, seen. He works on a very very international level. So it's a film on Arun Gavli, who came from Dagri Chol. Dagri Chol was basically the quarters for the mill workers uh, when there were mills in the 70s. And in the late 70s, unions came out, you know, the mills went on strike, and a lot of people were unemployed. And that's why I thought it was the right space to show this in, because I showed that when an opportunity is taken away, what happens? What are the repercussions of it? The repercussions of this was that the underbelly of the underworld started to grow because there was unemployment. You know, I think anybody who's got a full stomach and uh, has got a job and can send their children to school and uh, no one is starving and there's light and uh, electricity in their homes, you know, and they're just the basic necessities are taken care of, no one's going to pick up a gun. Right. But these people picked up guns because they didn't have choices. I don't think it's the right thing to do. I don't endorse it, but it's interesting to go through it. Uh, why did he, was he called daddy, is what really, really got me, you know, because usually when you speak about, if it's a godfather, or Scarface, or Goodfellas, or Sarkar, or comp uh, Company, or uh, Satya, or any of these uh, great uh, gangster films that were made, if you look at them, everybody's called a bhai, or a don, or you know, Don Corleone, and you know, you're like that, and they, is that, but no one has ever called a don or a gangster daddy. Right, right. Right? So yeah. that what kind of really got to me. And I think that was, it, it was called that because of the way he was giving back also to society. I'm not, this film is not propaganda, it is not about that. We hardly actually even touch that piece. But it is such an interesting life that this man has had, <clears throat> which I've said, okay, we send somebody to jail to reform. But when they serve their time and their sentence, and even when they come out, do we actually forgive them or we don't? Mm -hmm. Do we forget their past or we don't? And even after that, when they prove themselves, do we really believe them or we don't? These are opinions you will make once you watch that film. And so it's layered on many levels, but it also kind of shows you the history of Mumbai, the change of the skyline on Mumbai, how it all happened. I know you have had a lot of highs in your career. They say Dawn was probably the turning point in your career. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, yeah, I think Dawn, yes. But I think the real turning point really came with Om Shanti Om. <clears throat> was that was truly a challenging part to do. Uh, and then there was this movie I called uh, The Last Layer and then came Rock On. So it all happened kind of simultaneously and uh, yes, as you said, I've had highs in my career. I've also had many lows in my career and that's how it is. That's how our industry is. You have to go high and low and high and low, but you don't give up like anything else in life. You know, you keep going at it, uh, you keep having belief in yourself and most importantly, the belief that your fans have in you. And that really keeps you going. Uh, and I'd really like to thank all of them, uh, whoever's watching, for all their support. And now with Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, you know, you, I read all your comments and it really, really does uh, keep me going. Very nice. And you have a lot of other likes as, as well. A lot of people may not know, but you are very passionate about DJing. Is yeah, that I true? Love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love DJing. Uh, but I don't play Bollywood music, that's why many people don't know. So what kind of music do you play? Oh, I play Deep House and Tech House and you know, I like that kind of stuff. <coughs> I just play for fun. I have, I had a club and now I'm reopening another one and so um, I, I really like electronica music. I don't know why I like it, but I do like it. And then another thing is you're the owner of the Delhi Heroes. I was telling you earlier, my cousin yeah. happens yeah, to be Jason. your captain, Jason. Jason yeah. Small world. Yeah. He's a. I know I can see the similarity actually. <laughs> you can. Oh no! Please don't say that. <laughs> He's a, a naughty kid. <laughs> I think you're quite naughty too. Oh huh? really? So um, yeah, so Delhi Heroes. Uh, yeah, I'm one of the co-owners of uh, the team. Uh, MMA, I think, is a fantastic sport. New uh, uh, in India? New in India, but I think it'll grow really, really fast. I, I, and uh, I mean, Jason and all the uh, fighters out there are fantastic. I love physical fitness and the kind of training they all do is very, very special. 
you know it's such it's mixed martial arts so you learn so many different kinds of things it's also very holistic in its approach because you have to be you know in quite a meditative focused calm state to do so much damage so uh, it's it's a very deadly combination yeah it, what really excites me about it is is the prospect of opening gyms uh which will help train a lot of people in self defense through mma but at the same time keep them calm you know going to throw them into cages to fight and uh, one of the big things also through that would be to train a lot of women uh for self defense That's great. Yeah. So you have your plate full obviously uh you've been very generous with your time. In conclusion, what can we look forward to other than all that stuff? Well, right <laughs> now just look forward to Daddy on the 21st of July go Sounds and watch good. it and uh give it lots of love and um I hope I can keep entertaining you all for a long time. I am at Tandoori Gardens where a very successful cry event just took place and I'm here with Percy Presswala who's one of the organizers first of all congratulations for a great event thank you very much so tell me how did you get involved with cry well I've always liked to volunteer with children uh when I was in uh, Canada I used to be a part of Scouts Canada and when I came to California around 10 years ago uh I had heard of Cry when I was in India and I saw one of the Cry events taking place and I just reached out to them uh that was in Los Angeles and since then for 4 years ago and now I'm here uh started a new chapter in Orange County last year with a holy event uh, we had a successful walkathon and for the first time we decided to do a gala dinner event and uh, Arjun Rampal was here and we had a great time absolutely i was there and he was a wonderful guest and wow you raised almost or over $40,000 if i'm correct actually it's close to $60,000 wow well yeah that's such a wonderful feeling i'm sure for all those beautiful kids who deserve it Definitely. I mean, I always uh, feel that my children are so privileged growing up in this country and uh, knowing so much that uh, there is so much uh, poverty and uh, opportunities are not available and uh, kids uh, not only uh, don't have a square meal to eat but they don't have school to go to, they don't have proper drinking water. uh and it feels so good to be able to do something to elevate these kids from a level of poverty from nothingness to something and uh, i have actually visited one of those projects in amadnagar and it was really heartening to see how those kids flourish uh, as a result of our uh efforts that we do over here first of all congratulations for a very successful show this was fantastic Thank you so much. It was exciting for all of us. It was our very first cry dinner in Orange County slash LA. We had a good crowd of over 100 people. I think we crossed our target of 50,000 and maybe raised nearly 70k. Um, we had showcased our projects, and we are thrilled to have uh, this kind of support in Los Angeles. And am I correct that you've been involved with Cry for 25 years? That is correct. 25 years in India and the US, and uh, yes, and in, 20, in these uh, years in uh, the US, we have set up Cry America. We have about 25,000 donors and 2,000 volunteers that have gone way beyond being generous and committed to enable us to support over 70 projects and 660,000 children in India. Edward, how did you get involved with Cry? So I went to one of one such event it was a cultural event where they showcased uh, what cry does and this was in San Diego so right after that and I had to be part of that organization and I signed up to be a volunteer and we started off as a volunteer and then I took uh, the leadership of the action center in San Diego and then over time I handed off that leadership and now I'm part of the board of uh, Cry America. Obviously you've seen Cry grow and flourish over 25 years. What is your vision for Cry for the next 25 years? 
the number of children that we have in India, we're talking like large, large numbers. Um, there's a lot for us to do. We have millions of children in India that need support. And it is people like us uh, who have to kind of raise our voices to bring these, to highlight these issues, to amplify these issues, raise resources, and then support efforts back uh, in India that are really changing the lives of children in the communities along with the government. Absolutely. And kudos for such a wonderful job that you guys are doing. Tell me, Edward, what would you say to people? How fulfilling is this for you and why should other people get involved? So I strongly believe that uh, children are our future and this is a cause that I identify with very much and when I look at uh, every child, my own ch child, I look back at the children who do not have the same opportunity and to know that I'm doing what I can to make that difference in spite of my day job as a volunteer and uh, not only as myself but also motivating and encouraging other volunteers to do what they can do so that we can do what we can to give those children a chance so that they can be build a brighter, bigger future for this world. That's absolutely the reward that I get out of this. And Shifali, tell everyone how can they get involved and donate. Thank you Showbiz. You've done, uh, been extremely supportive of CRY. We need media houses to support us. It is only through the media that we can reach out to larger numbers of people. We have three chapters in um, uh, San Diego, Los Angeles, uh, Orange County and in Bay Area. Please join us. Uh, join us as volunteers or donate. Your time, your money, your concern is all what we need visit www.america.cry.org to support us.